going back to your other question, the other part that you said, which was you don't know what you don't know, which is like the scariest thing yes. getting out of the military. How did you overcome? Because I believe that how did you overcome your overall fear of getting out with not knowing what you don't know, combined with your desire to tend towards um, stability? Hmm. I would say that hmm. that that is an interest. Okay, so I'm trying to think of the best way to 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 answer that. I know you're laughing at me now. Um, I I think for me is that not knowing what I didn't know and and making that decision to leave the military. Should I left the military? Um, I I think that you know there's. I, 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 I'm not one to give too much advice to folks. And I'll, I'll because the thing is, is that uh, you work in Amazon, I work at Amazon. One thing I always laugh and joke about our culture is that everybody has an opinion and they're only partially right. And so I offer this, this advice that I'm about to give with that disclaimer in there is that I have my opinion and I could, I could be wrong or I could just, it could just be a different, a difference of opinion. So first off, Making that decision to leave the military was incredibly scary. Um, I, if I, truth be told, if it wasn't for my my spouse Danielle um, supporting me and saying, uh, you know, I she wants something better than me, or better for me in terms of uh, alignment to who I was and my interests, etc. Um, I would probably again house not on fire. I would probably still be in the military just because I don't want to deal with the headache. I'm comfortable where I'm at, even though it's not exactly. Um, it's not exactly uh, causing causing me harm. Um, so I think when it comes to 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 answer your question is that it's really about making a decision uh, and understanding that that um, it's a two way door decision. That if for some reason I step out of the military, uh, I did it. I did corporate life for a little bit. Uh, I realized it wasn't for me. It's okay to decide to go back in the military. I actually had one of my one of my uh, battalion officers, uh, great friend, great uh, great mentor, great great wealth of wisdom that I was able to leverage. He actually spent about five years out between his captain and his major time, um, and that was uh, hugely formative for him. And again, going back to my my theme of uh, we are the sum of all our parts. Um, just because you you try a path doesn't and and it doesn't turn out or it doesn't work doesn't mean that it was it was bad for you it means that you gave it a you gave it the good old college try um and if it didn't work it's okay to fail uh, i know in the military um at least in my position i was terrified of failure uh everything i had to do would be would have to be perfect because for me there op, a failure was not an option um and stepping into a place where you know translating that as I took the military culture or the military tradition into my personal life and making that my own personal identity or, or a large part of that, seeing failure is not an option to happen. Um, lately, and uh, since leaving the military and, and, and failing a lot, honestly, and, and not just, um, you know, I, I fail every day. I fail in my day-to-day -day job. I fail, uh, I fail all the time. And understanding that it's okay to fail, but learning from that is important. And so you know, for those out there, um, my my opinion or my advice would be if you are feeling like you need a change or you need something different, it's okay to try something. It's okay to, you know, for example, for me, take up bread making, you know, and see, am I a good bread maker? Obviously not, because uh, I've made some horrible, horrible bread during uh, bread loaves during um, during this this COVID season. But, uh, you know, obviously, my uh, my spouse, she laughed at it, but she was just like, you know what? That's okay. You're doing something. It's fun. Obviously, lesson learned. Let's not have you make bread again. So was um, yeah was yeah. bread the was bread the weirdest thing that you tried during COVID? No, 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 no. So uh, I slowly I'm slowly learning from bread, but like you, I don't like to read a lot of instructions. I just like to ask folks, and that usually ends up with some very interesting interesting instructions. Um, I've I've made yogurt. Uh, I got I had a, a little a little uh, a little tryst with um, with uh, crocheting. Um, so like it's just 
pick up things, try it out, see if it works. Um, yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. cool. Points for you for using an SAT word like Trist in a podcast, by the way. That's that's uh, that's sweet. So going back, going back to something that you said that I think is really interesting. Do you think so? I'm someone that I can really relate. Like I was my exit from the military was a little bit different. Like I knew I couldn't go back, but I still really approached. I approached my transition in a similar way to how you viewed stuff in the military, which was like, I've got to get this right. And there was a lot of stress um, associated with that, which I can completely, so I can completely empathize with you there. Do you think that knowing that it was a two-way door decision was the information that you needed to give you kind of the courage to move through that? And before you answer that question, just to give everybody like what a two-way door decision is, we both know because we're both Amazonians. It's a concept in our company that basically says if you make, if it's a decision that you make that you can walk back from with little to no consequences, it's a two-way door decision. You can walk into the door, you can say, oh, it sucks over here, and then you can come back. A one-way door decision is once you go through the door, it's done. Uh, so really cool decision-making concept, but once you had established that, hey, this is a two-way door decision for me, and you actually saw someone who had done that, was that the piece of information you needed to kind of sally forth? See, I can use SAT words too. There you go. I like it. I like it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, obviously, uh, it's, 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 it's person and situation dependent, but I would say yes. I think uh, once, you, once you make that decision... Um, understand that there there are very few one-way door decisions um obviously they they exist and they can happen or you can create you can make a one-way door decision out of a two-way door decision but that's a whole nother conversation um but the bigger part is is situational dependent and personal per, personal or personality dependent yes i think that understanding that uh it's okay to try something and it's okay to fail and it's okay to say i don't want to do this anymore um, so, yeah. okay. and so I guess the, the next question is if that was the thing that you needed to see, to have the confidence to get out, True. what do you think you would have needed if it was a one way door decision? How would you have tried to overcome that? Like I need to do this the right way anxiety. If you couldn't have walked it back. I don't think I, I think I would be a lot a lot more scared to do it to, to actually so i think i would have i have done the um the predator prey thing of just freeze and just hopefully that you know uh, hopefully either decision is made for me um or i um or uh you know i i uh i would i would definitely be been a, a lot a lot more nervous and uh don't get me wrong i was terrified uh but i i think i i would i would approach it with a lot more fear knowing that there's no going back. Um, and, and, and so that's, and uh, one thing I would say though, with that, with something like that, having a support team, especially like as I, I keep mentioning here, uh, you know, I, I hold my spouse in the highest regard. Like she's a rock star. Like she's, as you should. she's the reason, she's the reason that she, like I, I, I can get up in the morning and, uh, and do the things I do because if I don't, you know, I'll get a, I'll get a shoe thrown at me one and then two. She she just keeps me motivated. She's she's my uh, cheerleader, and I, I really I really appreciate her. Um, but I think having that support system, where even if it's a one way door decision, saying hey, uh, no matter what you do, if you fail, if you do something right, um, you know, if you if you uh, fail forward or or you know fail upwards, um, that's okay. Um, or you fail back. But having somebody in your corner is, is so incredibly important and having that community where folks are, are looking after you and really, really trying to ensure that you are doing what's best for you and ensuring that you are being uh, healthy at the end of the day, I think is, I think is the best way to, to put it, at least in my opinion. Yeah, no, I think that I love that you keep talking about community because I think having that support system is very important because for a lot of people, when you get out of the military, you might not have that support system in the same way that you thought you did. Sure. And you really do need that to move past, move past uh, your time in the military. 